sure is going to be hard to leave this place. I suppose all my life I've worked up to this point, so I'm living off grid. Back in 2007 ish, I think, I started experimenting with solar panels. But even as a kid, I experimented with solar panels. I remember making a light bulb for science class or science show or whatever. I made a light bulb and used solar panels. I know that's stupid, but it showed that I could actually power a light bulb. I made a light bulb out of filament and a cork. And, uh, yeah. and now today, I am got my own solar panels. I have made my own solar panel, actually. I use solar cells, bought six inch solar cells, and soldered them all together. I, it, it was a catastrophe, but it did produce electric. The solar cells broke really easy. And I, I just didn't have the setup and the patience and all that back then. But I did that in 2007-ish, I think. We put solar panels on top of the house. And there was more failures to that than there was success. But we finally got it to work. And there was a tax break on that. And then, of course, I went back to work. Yeah, I was a consultant at the time. I was running my own company. And then I went back to work for an employer. And so I did that for a few years, and then I met Carolyn after me and my ex-wife divorced. And we've been kind of adventurous ever since. We started out living on eight acres. She had acre, eight acres, but she had to sell it uh, for a family member who was sick. So we moved on eight acres and we rented it. And the rent was really cheap. We paid three fifty dollars for it a month. It was just, I guess, a guy and his sister was taking care of the mom and dad's property. You know, it was willed to them and they didn't want to get rid of it. So we cut the grass, I guess maintained it. I don't even know if we maintained it. I guess he just wanted somebody there. So we stayed there for a while. That was pretty nice. I would have loved to have bought that place. I don't know if we could have ever afforded it, but I would love to have bought it. And then we started out on the road. We traveled for three years, three or four years. Started on a pop-up camper, and I tell you, everybody told you couldn't do it. And I used some of the techniques in the pop-up camper that I'd learned from the solar panels. So essentially, what I did in the pop-up camper was I had two batteries. I guess I had two batteries, and I did the same thing that I'm doing here. Pretty much, except without solar panels. So I had two batteries and an inverter. So the batteries powered the inverter, and the inverter powered all our appliances. The difference is, is we ran a generator for eight hours a day. Four hours in the morning, four hours in the evening to charge that battery. And we had battery charger. Instead of solar panels, we had a battery charger. So the battery charger runs the, uh, off the generator. The battery charger charges the batteries. And the inverter would power the house. So the inverter changes DC electric, so battery electric, into AC electric, house electric. I have two inverters here, and as you can see, inverters have a plug-in just like a house. I would imagine you can see that. I know it's a little dark in here, so I apologize. And you can get those anywhere, and I highly suggest that you get one. No matter what, just go get a thousand watt one, something. Go get to Walmart and get it. You can get one of these modified sine waves. These are pure sine waves, and you can get one like that for probably a hundred bucks. And I never tell anybody to buy anything, but it would really be a good idea to have one because if the electric goes out in your house and you want to run your freezer or something, you can literally start your car, put the positive terminal on the back of the inverter onto the battery, put a negative terminal onto the negative of the battery, run an extension cord to your car, to the inverter, and now you got some electric that you can run some things off of. Not a lot. But it's like a, a generator in your house, you know, that you already have. All you need is the inverter. Highly recommend getting it. Now that I know about them, even if I live in a regular house, I, I, would, I wouldn't live without one. I've always had one since I've learned of, of them. They're just a good idea to have. Or you're on a road trip and you want to power something, a blow dryer. I mean, you've got to figure out your wattage. You can run your blow dryer in the car. I mean, I've stayed in the car lots of times. I used to travel for my business and I would sleep in the car at rest stops. I don't think you can do that anymore, but I used to do that. What I learned from the house, which is solar panels come into a charge controller. So that's the difference. Instead of a generator, you have solar panels. Instead of a battery charger, you have charge controllers. And so what charge controllers do is takes that electricity, which is DC, 
from the solar panels and manipulates it, does stuff with it, and then puts it into the batteries and charges your batteries. Then your batteries go to the inverter and the inverter powers the house. So it's the same principle. We lived in a pop-up camper for, I guess, a year, maybe a little longer, year and a half. And we were down in Florida's National Forest, Apalachicola, I think. And someone burned down our pop-up camper. <laughs> Crazy guy. And he was mad because he thought that we were campsite hosts. It's a long story what his problem was, but he didn't like being forced to move around from one campsite to another campsite to another campsite. He felt like he should be able to stay in one spot. Well, we got to, well, everybody got to stay in the National Forest for an entire winter because of hunting season. I think it was three months. We had this ticket that we bought from the National Forest that gave us an extended stay. We stayed there, I think, an extra month. I don't remember. Well, I guess he didn't know about the ticket, or he already used his ticket for the year, whatever the case is. So he got mad that he thought we were getting to stay longer than everybody else. So he burned down our camper. Also because he thought it was a campsite host. I'm not entirely clear what his problem was, but he was crazy. Then we built the truck camper. Truck camper has worked fantastic. I know there's a lot of people who hate that thing, but I love it. We're gonna tear it down this year, end of its life. And it took us all over the place. We went further with this than we did with the pop-up camper. Went to South Dakota and I don't remember everywhere. Ended up in Arizona, Texas, all kinds of different places. We really loved this. I loved it a lot more because it gave us what I felt like more flexibility and we didn't have to leave the pop-up behind. The problem is if we wanted to go for a walk at the National Forest, then I was always concerned that somebody get mad at us burning this down, which was attached to the truck because it burned the truck down. Now you don't have a, a phone because you're out in the National Forest and, and no car. It, I don't know. It was kind of stressful lifestyle, which was what we were trying to get away from was the stress. So then we moved here. Within a, a year or two, we were completely established. Everything was was set up. Now we're just improving things. We stayed in the truck camper for almost an entire year. We got here in March and then we stayed in the truck camper until January, at which time we built the tiny house. Moved into the tiny house in wintertime, right before this winter vortex hit. It was cold. So we struggled with the winter vortex because we had wet firewood. Not, it was still green. It wasn't 20% or less moisture content. So we struggled with the water because it froze. But we've gotten better since then. We haven't had those issues. At first year, we had two chimney fires and the water froze. Second year, we didn't have any problems. So last year, the water froze again, but we were at negative four degrees before it froze. So I thought that was really good. But we still can get water out of the well, even if the water tank, RV pump, the tanks had never froze. It's the RV pump that freezes. If it freezes, we can still get water out of the well. So now we are making things better. So in, I think, video yesterday or day before yesterday, I was talking to you about the improvements we made to the well. And it did, has, it's working so much better. We're not getting any dirt in it. It works like a well's supposed to work. And the water's just beautifully clean. And then we got the camper, this big camper for Carolyn's son. And now Carolyn is moving a lot of stuff over here. I feel a little guilty because like, oh, we don't live in a tiny house anymore. but. Basically, she's moving everything in here that so she can cook over here. So she still has the Coleman can stove on the back of the porch, but she's cooking in here now. And I don't blame her because it gets kind of cold in the wintertime to cook. So she's setting this all up. And she can do dishes in here now. And she gets hot water from the coffee pot, which we can run off solar, cooking. And then uh, she kind of set this up as our dining room which we don't have a dining room. We've always kind of sat where we could in the tiny house. And so we eat in here. She seems to like this as far as a cooking dining room area. I don't know, I feel a little guilty, like we're betraying our tiny house, but I understand she wants us something a little better. But we can't move into it. A lot of people seem to think we should move into it. I don't think it's a good idea. It would be a lot harder to heat, almost impossible to heat. I mean, the windows are, leaky and we have to put plastic up all the time and you know, there's no insulation in it so it would just be impossible to heat but it's got an air conditioner in it we like i said we've improved the solar panels enough that 
we are able to run this air conditioner pretty much non-stop we can run the well pump off the solar panels also now on a day like this today's kind of a bummer day it's cloudy and I'm, not, I'm only making about 10 amps it's not doing too good I may get a full battery charge today but you know I got to have that chip battery so it gets me through the night so I won't use the well or the coffee pot today but we'll still get to be able to run that freezer I try so hard to avoid running that generator now that we got the solar panels more efficient but like I said we we can run that well on a sunny day from like 9 30 a.m. till 2 p.m. maybe even longer than that Carolyn ran that coffee pot at 2 p.m. yesterday and the batteries have plenty of time to charge back up a lot more efficient and we're just so independent and I tell people all the time on the YouTube videos that my definition of being off-grid is being self-reliant as much as possible and I think that we are pretty independent here we don't have to buy food we do buy food simply because we choose to but I don't think we'd have to it wouldn't take us much time at all to be able to switch away from buying groceries we don't buy electric we won't don't buy water so I, I think we could live here independently now the house is paid for the property is paid for the property was forty two hundred dollars with the well now the wells got to be at least worth five to ten thousand dollars if we bought the well, uh, the property without the well that been forty two hundred dollars plus another five thousand dollars now we're up nine thousand so what we have invested in this is forty two hundred on the property five thousand into the house so we're up to ninety two hundred dollars probably another twelve hundred in solar panels I've invested probably another 500 in in the well and that's pretty much all that we've done I don't really consider the chickens an investment on the property that's just food cost it reduces our food cost but the camper it's nice to have don't need it at all but we run that off the solar panels also so you can see probably see here my wire that I ran got uh, damaged so I'm using an extension cord but there's the the wire to the camper and it runs all the way to the shed where the inverters are that's my definition of independence then uh, somebody's going to say what about taxes you don't own your property you got to pay taxes our taxes are 42 dollars a year and that's because we bought something so cheap and we live so cheaply i've said in the previous video if you don't like taxes on your house can't afford your taxes because your house is too expensive I get criticized for these power lines all the time oh you got power lines you're not off grid well the power lines brought the cost of the property down which means less taxes think about it I don't have to complain about taxes because I don't owe much in taxes one of the comments I get all the time is I live off grid in the desert in Arizona in a van or an RV well, I know the, what that means. It means you're a nomad. It means you travel like we did. And never once did I think we lived off grid. I relied on too much. Remember, I told you my definition is being independent, self reliant. Now, everybody's definition to off grid is different. Some people think you need to live on the moon to be off grid. But at a minimum, you should be able to provide your own water and electric. At a minimum. Now, as far as electric, I know a lot of these vanners have solar panels, and so that's great. But water, you're not independent if you have to get water from somebody. And when I was a nomad, people would do some of the most illegal things to get water. If you're breaking the law to get a basic necessity, you're not off grid. I heard of people saying, the law requires that a homeowner has to allow you to get water out of their water hose. And so they would just pull them some guy's yard and get water no that's trespassing it's illegal don't do it you're not you're not independent and the other thing is that guy that burned down our camper was mad because he had to move around every two weeks so i'm sure he didn't feel off-grid if the government is literally kicking him out every two weeks you have to leave now i know the people in that desert once again breaking the law oh it's fine just don't get caught so you're you're hiding from the government on property that's not yours again if you have to break the law to do something that's not off-grid 
This is off grid. I'm not breaking any laws. Nobody's bothering me. This is how to live. Don't don't convince yourself you're off grid. If you had to pay for a house bill, property bill, taxes that are you're at risk of not being able to pay if you lose your job or economy goes broke. You're definitely not off grid if somebody's kicking you off your property every two weeks. So if you click this up next box, take you to a video where I was talking about VP Harris gave us a stern warning for living off grid. So if I can inspire you to find your independence so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.